What is up you amazing people? It is I, Nima, and today I want to talk about a game called Innocence Island. It is the exact opposite of Epstein Island, by the way. But I have to thank Rainy Night Creations for letting me get early access to this game and allow me to play a little bit and really explore because that's what so much of this game is about. And so much of this game is kind of wrapped in mysticism and the unknown. So let's find out if this is a game worth your time or a game that'll have you going on a one-way trip on the Lolita Express. But before we get into that, I would like you guys to please hit that like button, and if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. We've kind of been in a slump here, and uh, I need more subscribers. I need more power. I need more. I basically just need the ability to not have to pay for as many games as I do, because I'm going broke. <laughs> anyway, in Innocence Island, you find yourself targeting a prism. So there's like these three lights that are coming from the sky, and it's far away. You can see something almost like it's a sun, is what I actually thought it was, until I read a little bit deeper in, and found out it's supposedly legend has it it's a prism and if you reach this you will get untold amounts of happiness and being content and at this point in life you have to do that it's your only option that or death and so you proceed to make yourself like a little raft and before you know it you're absconded by a storm of sorts and you wake up with no memory whatsoever like completely whitewashed and i'm not talking about like your typical rpg oh i'm i have amnesia i don't know my name i should be in daytime TV. No, you don't even know how to walk. <laughs> You don't know how to jump, how to run, how to do any of that stuff. And this is where the game at first really turned me off because I was playing it and I was like, okay, um, is there no other, the buttons don't do anything? What is with this? And I actually thought about contacting the developer and asking him like, what is going on? Like, why, why can't I do anything? And as I started playing through it though, I realized that if you hold down the left trigger, you actually observe other creatures. There's only about a few humans that you first, see. I think I would say only like one on honestly, but a lot of animals, and you can observe them, and as you observe them, you learn what they're doing. So when it comes to, like, jumping, there's, like, a little monkey that'll, he's jumping, and you observe him, now you know how to jump, and A becomes a jump button. So you see, you're relearning everything, cooking, things like just crafting weapons, and climbing, so all this stuff, like, it's cool because as you're going through the game, and you're going through these unexplored areas, you see paths, and you see things that you can do, like, you see a vine growing up to a landing that might have something cool up there, but you can't climb yet. So you have to wait or go find somebody that you see climbing something and observe them and take that in. It's same as like combat, basically everything in this game you have to observe. So you have to be observing a lot, which is actually a really cool idea. And, you know, just taking away from these like limitations of like, a, I don't know, an arbitrary wall, that, you know, that's blocking you from another area or something. I really like this idea. It's a really good way to, to set up limitations without it being so in your face that it is, in fact, limiting. I think what's really interesting about this game is you can actually choose the graphic style. <laughs> and you can go from, like, pixel art to, like, this high-res kind of um, situation, which is, like, the standard. And there's there's three options in total. And I, I really like that aspect that you can change all of that. With that being said, though, the graphic style kind of reminds me of a time when, you know, you go out drinking with your friends, you run into Aaron Rodgers, he wants to do ayahuasca, you say, okay, whatever. You you wake up in a McDonald's bathroom next to a handsome woman with a bigger Adam's apple than you. Like, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like, you've had those experiences? No, I mean neither. I don't, I don't know what you... But no, <laughs> the, the visuals in this game will sometimes do that to you where it's just very odd to see the colors that they choose to use. Like, sometimes, depending on day, you can see exactly where you're supposed to go. You, you see the, the outlay of the entire map that you're looking at. But there's other times when you're looking and you can't tell if something is water or if it's just a different shade of color it, it, it's really archaic in that aspect but it, it does have it does serve its purpose because i think like without that you wouldn't have this sort of mysticism about the game you wouldn't have this unknown feeling while you're traversing this land now you do meet a few characters along the way and all of them there again it's not a lot of knowledge you're imprinted with but there is a a genie kind of guy <laughs> who's like guiding you he's he's completely made up of 
prism. Like, he's like a diamond. <laughs> kind of looks like a samurai, but he floats. I don't know his, his story. <laughs> he kind of guides you through the game to an, to an aspect, and then you actually run into a guy who, or a being, who is defending the prism. And basically, he's like almighty, super strong. He will ruin your day. And he warns you early on, stay away from the prism. Or, you know, stuff's about to go down. I absolutely, though, love the music. I think the music really builds up the entire game. Now, personally, like I said before, I think the aspect of the visuals and the unknown of the story keep it at a place where it may not be a game for me, honestly, because I kind of like to have a little bit more story just kind of explained to me because I have the intelligence of a gnat and I need information spoon-fed to me because of the exploration itself. Like I said, with the graphics and with some of the lighting, a lot of it, I'm telling you, is the lighting. It's not even the graphics, but the lighting makes it so hard to tell what you're supposed to be doing or where you're supposed to be going. And and then other times, like I said, like if it's daytime, then you can see perfectly where everything is at. Now, ultimately, there's a lot to this game. And if you just want to explore and you don't want to deal with fighting any enemies that pop up, you can actually put on a helmet that they give you really early on, which protects you from any sort of enemies or encounters of that nature. And you can just explore, which is cool, but you'll still die a lot of times trust me <laughs> i fell off of so many things and there's times when you're just walking and there's just a gigantic pit you'll just fall into and it'll kill you i don't know for me it's not a game that i would play honestly like i love the direction i love the ambition that's behind this game and the creativity but it might be just a little too creative for me and i don't know i i would say that if you like different games if you like very artistic games and you like exploration a lot then this would be a good game for you and you don't mind the fact that sometimes the graphics are a little hit and miss this would be great uh, again i have to also applaud the music the the sound and the music is just fantastic but yeah like i said for me not a game that i would play if i was going to rank it between you know a one or a ten i, I would say it probably would fit in about a six for me like i think it's above average for sure but just for me personally not a not a huge fan but it is a great game anyway guys i appreciate you each and every one of you are amazing and like always i'm wishing you health wealth and above all i hope you're truly happy take care guys Bye bye